namaste welcome all today's theme is freedom from the known why should we be free from the known what is known how can you be free from known then again all spiritual teachings of the world say know yourself <laughs> right seems to be a contradiction freedom from the known we say then you say know yourself so how i can know myself and how i can be free from the known what is known is in the domain of maya what is known is in the domain of maya or appearance right so always something is there which you don't know which is called unknown then once our attention goes there it becomes known then after that the unknown becomes a memory unknown become known known becomes a memory the object may disappear from us but the unknown memory of the unknown will be there as a recording known known so shiva in shiva sutra says gnanam bandaha knowledge is the bondage how can knowledge be bondage people think that knowledge is power gnana no, knowledge is power that's a power in english knowledge is power okay so how knowledge can be a bondage is knowledge power or bondage knowledge is a power when i have to work engineering uh, work on a subject engineering mathematics medicine the knowledge of that subject is required definitely without knowledge i cannot work then when shiva says gnanam bandaha he is speaking of some other knowledge it is the knowledge of the self is the bondage knowledge of who am i is the bondage when we were a child we are blissful the child does not have a name for any objects in the world child is very happy peaceful it has hunger it will cry it has a pain it will cry but the bliss of the child is not disturbed but the moment you give a name to the child putta papu there is a sense of separation start developing i and the world so naming causes a sense of separation before naming there is no sense of separation so let us take the case of animals okay animals they don't have language maybe they have some language rudimentary okay are they blissful are they peaceful because life in a forest is very dangerous any time you can die any time something can be killed life is uncertain but they are blissful in a sense when food is required they are hungry they eat when some animal comes and threatens them they'll run but after that peace is there again bliss is there because mind is not overactive thinking 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 what happened in the future what happened in the past the thinking requires a language the language gives us the ability to think no language 
no thinking some feeling will be there but it's not thinking so animals also are afraid when something comes they run but after that they peacefully graze so the bliss is there all the time so the mess is happening because of our thinking ability because of thinking means naming please understand naming and thinking go together thinking is nothing more objects thinking is possible about the objects only no objects no thinking thinking is about objects and thinking requires a language language and objects are required for thinking so animals are blissfully free from the language related thinking the language with the language we are able to create concepts of past present future objects i have something i don't have something and this thinking conceptualization is our knowledge so is knowledge power definitely to be successful in life we need power but knowledge becomes a bondage when we add lot of accumulate our lot of ideas about ourselves it is a bondage bandha that's why shiva in shiva sutra says gnanam bandha knowledge is bondage why because as the child start developing identity it start developing notion of its own who am i there is the knowledge of the self it's not this knowledge of atma knowledge of the ego i am the body i am the mind i am the intellect i am happy i am unhappy and we keep on doing conceptual thinking so this happened this event happened i am suffering because of that even suffering is also a concept what event happened also is a concept concept in the mind a memory file we are continuously opening our memory file and creating more stress for ourselves some time back my friend didn't talk to me memory so now what will happen if i meet another person that person doesn't talk to me we are operating on the memory creating a situation of future which is stress so all our identity is about who am i that knowledge is our bondage because what i was as a child i was nobody being nobody is a bliss we become somebody when the naming starts the day the name is given to us the day we start identifying ourselves we become somebody some body and the become become some body knowledge about ourselves grows and knowledge of the world also grows because we start acquiring knowledge our entire life is conceptual knowledge we are operating on the conceptual knowledge all the time operating on the concept of knowledge also is not a problem but the concept of knowledge option the concepts give us stress reality is not giving stress the concept is giving us stress we always constantly live in the past or future never live in the present thinking about the past thinking about the future without understanding thoughts are nothing but concepts stored in memory and we take that concepts and make it real project it on the future or worry about the past and start getting stressed so that's why gnanam becomes a bondage gnanam about self knowledge self whatever self knowledge wrong self knowledge i have becomes bondage whatever self knowledge we acquire is how what society thinks of me what i think of myself that's knowledge what i have this called knowledge of the me who am i small self ego body mind complex so this knowledge becomes bonded the more i have an identity of myself the more i have problem 
all our problems are because of the identity what we have image of what i have image stored in memory what i have and what is stored in my memory is what i know known that's called nana that is my bondage somebody comes and starts crying i lost lot of money i lost lot of money how did you lose lot of money see yesterday one week back the stock market was 50000 the market crash it came to 45000 10 days back my net worth was 1 crore because stock market crashed my net worth is 75 lakhs so 25 lakhs i lost it's a notion of loss he invested only 10 lakhs notionally it went to 1 crore notionally it came to 75 lakhs notion of loss loss of 25 lakhs hurt so all our gain and loss is notional in life we live in a world of notions we don't live in reality what happens mulla nasudin was newly married he is sleeping with his wife on the bed the house is small he is not a rich man okay the wife is newly newly married she is very shy to the shy to tell her husband that you are not rich man you have to become rich this is a small house she can't tell directly she says mulla ji mulla sir kya ji mulla ji yes this bed is so small no ha ji bed is so small what happens when child is born to us she is trying to point out indirectly the house is small so mulla ji says don't worry i will move a little bit you will move a little bit the child will sleep here in between he makes a space <laughs> right as the wife doesn't leave at that line she wants to point out the house is small they are a poor fellow become rich mulla ji if i have a second child what to do don't worry the space he starts moving little bit more see in the space for two children one child is one child she doesn't want to leave here she has not this guy has not understood the point at all mulla ji if i have third child ayyo bibi ji why are you worrying there is more space see i he moves forward and suddenly falls on the bed okay now after falling he already his leg is injured he is fractured tomorrow he has a bandage he is going in the street people are asking mulla ji what happened to you your leg is broken kya bolo ji my third child caused the problem are <laughs> 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 you are married yesterday hal <laughs> imaginations first child second child third child how to handle the third child <laughs> and the third child imagine the third child you give space and he fell down <laughs> please look at your life how many children you are producing every day <laughs> imagine the children imagine the problem imagine the solutions so this nana is bandha information is there information you consider consider give it reality and then try to operate on that try to find a solution which doesn't exist then get into another problem no no memory is a big problem memory is not a problem using the memory is a problem so this way it's a nanam bandha so as the child grows knowledge about the self increases how hey you are a girl child girl child should behave like this you are a boy you should never cry so there's a education from the society a 
about me, about my identity. That identity is false. So girl, girl crying is okay. Boy crying is a problem. In fact, boy not crying because he's told not to cry in the chair from me. Boys don't cry. That becomes a suffering for him. That's a, actually, he's not able to out uh, express it. That becomes another problem for the person when he grows up. But all identities we pick up from the society, from the environment, becomes our knowledge of myself. It is not a first-hand knowledge at all. It is not your knowledge. It is borrowed knowledge. If with the borrowed knowledge of who you are, you are living. And with the borrowed knowledge of who is the others also, you are living. And you are working on one concept or the other concept and creating one more concept and get trapped in that concept. So this is called Nanam Bandaha. So as the boy, as the person grows, I have to become successful in engineering, mathematics, science, physics. Your knowledge of the subject grows. One interesting thing is the more knowledge of the subject grows, more ignorance also grows because you don't know many things. And more knowledge of yourself also grows. Who am I? Earlier I was a boy. Now I become an engineer. Now I become a professor. My social role, all those become my identity. And the problem with this identity is they are not real. Anytime they can go. I was an engineer. One day I may lose my job. I'm not an engineer. So whole of my life is about myself, my identity, surviving that. That's why all spiritual teachings say, know yourself. Know yourself. But they don't mention yourself. Huh. Know yourself directly. Everything about yourself is indirect knowledge. What is your direct knowledge of yourself? Please tell me. What were you as a child? What were you as a child? Is yourself blissful. What were you as a child? Is your real self. Everything else is given a role given to you, identity given to you by the society, environment. You are following, forgot your own identity, which is a natural identity of a child innocent child and you are living a pseudo identity or your identity given by society nothing wrong in living identity as long as you understand its identity role to play play but you, your problem is you give reality to that the roles become real to us we have forgotten the innocence of the child what we are Know yourself means know yourself as you were born, freshly coming from the world. Blissful, innocent. Our nana becomes a bondage because we start identities given for us for the society, for interaction purpose. No road interaction is identity is given. But that identity we starting is real. Forgetting my original identity. What is the original identity? Innocent child, blissful child, free from thoughts. The blissfulness is gone. And life becomes a mess. So that's why when you say know yourself, the spiritual teaching, we want to know myself. I know I'm an engineer. I know I'm a doctor. I'm a husband. I'm a man. I want to know myself. So we would try, want to make myself as an object for knowledge. When you say spiritual teaching, you say know yourself. Atma Dnana is not an objective knowledge. So many people think that, oh, I have to get Atma Dnana, spiritual knowledge. I have to get some special experience. Because the moment you say special experience, you are an object. It's an object in knowledge. Yourself cannot be an object at all. Our entire problem is we have objectified ourselves and given a name and form to that. And that name and form we live as if it's real. Are we clear? So when spiritual teachings say know yourself. You cannot know yourself as an object. 
you cannot know yourself as a subject you cannot know yourself as a experience you can know yourself as unknowable <laughs> the moment you know something it becomes an object so there's something known in the world something unknown in the world there's something unknowable is there the knower of the anything is always unknowable the knower is the spy he sees everything he knows everything but he doesn't nobody can see that unknowable is you no no i want to know one day myself you can know yourself any day as unknowable you any effort to know the unknowable becomes a failure then how to know the unknowable you cannot know the unknowable <laughs> you can only reject what is known what is known as me you can say it is not me how can it not be me am i not a woman you are definitely a woman for the society you have a woman's body am i not a mother definitely you are a mother because for the child there's a role for the body you are a woman as consciousness you are neither a woman nor a body i want to know my consciousness you cannot know your consciousness because consciousness cannot know itself the moment consciousness knows itself the consciousness becomes object the consciousness can know any object so you have to say real i is unknowable yato vacho nivartante words cannot touch it anything knowable is finite it's available to sense organs and the mind but are you available for sense organs and mind you are in dark room i'll ask you in the room is there a is there a chair there's no chair i can't see because light is required is there a is there a book i can't see light is required are you there yes i am there what light is required to prove that you are there why are you there how do you say you are there i say i am there because i have a body there comes the problem because you say you exist because of the body so before body you didn't exist then no no i didn't exist before the body then you must be something very special in the universe galaxy because science and spirituality say what was not existent cannot appear what is a, what, a, what what uh, non existence cannot oh, sorry uh, what was not there cannot appear what is there can become unknown and becomes known vyakta and avyakta manifest and unmanifest but what was not there never can appear so there must be you must, you must be a very special case some of you want to be special i was not there before my body was there then what was there vacuum was there what was there you were there in unmanifest form avyakta now you are manifest in the form of body vyakta after that you become unmanifest avyakta there is no point of time we can say i was not existent some form i was existent so now if i search for myself i will not be able to find myself as a object the moment i find myself as object that's a name and form it's a knowledge we have to become free from knowledge of the self self small self called ego big self is not a knowledge big self is a acceptance that i am the unknowable and you have to be thankful because because you are unknowable you are infinite finite only is knowable infinite can cannot be known so that's where peace is freedom from known we have to be free from the known what will happen if you become free from known please tell me 
Known has two things: a subject and object. As we grow up, knowledge of the subject also grows, and knowledge of the world also grows. Objective knowledge. Okay. So now, objective knowledge is is another kind of problem. What we call an object knowledge is also again a concept. It's not reality. This is seen in the dilemma of scientists. They said, "Oh, I want to have objective knowledge. Science is about objectivity. So they, I, I want to be objective because only if you are objective, you can discuss and share." They start with the matter. So matter is solid. What is real matter? They start going into deeper into matter. So matter is nothing but atoms and molecules. What is atoms and molecules? Is subatomic particles and molecules. What? What is subatomic particles? Is energy. What is energy? We don't know. So there is something unknowable there that we give some name, and then we start thinking it's real. Atoms are real. Atoms is a concept in the mind of scientist. Nobody has seen an atom. Okay, energy is also in the equation in the scientist mind. So conceptual knowledge we start working because what is out there is also unknowable. What is in here is also unknowable. What is out there is called existence, pure existence. It's called Brahman. So we give some names and forms, and then start interacting as if the names and forms are real. We start with objects as if something is real. Forgetting that objects are so concepts, the reality out there is Atma. The reality in here is Atma. The reality out is called Brahman. Reality in here is called Atma. Atma and Brahman are one, which is never knowable. So our freedom or mukti is freedom from the known, freedom from the concept that, freedom from the concept of known. Freedom, concepts are useful for interaction purpose, but concepts are not real. concepts are useful for functioning purpose we are the one who is giving reality to the concepts and start interacting as if it is real you are the one who is giving reality to concepts concepts are not binding you you are bind you are holding on to the concepts we are making concepts as real concepts as loving concepts as a reality there was a great film actor in uh, in film actor gil actress all the roles which she played or or called uh, tragic roles at the end of the roles some suicide will be there some death will be there one day the actress commits suicide the same way she played a role in the movie the movie which is play, role which she played becomes real to us it's a role it's a it's a acting purpose that becomes real to us real to her the concepts make a reality we are making concepts as real concepts are useful but they are not real and all things which are available to our sense organs and the mind is called concept and the concept is what is knowledge we use we are only manipulating the objects of the world in terms of concepts for our functioning okay what is the value of this piece of paper how much is the how much you want to give for this anybody wants to uh, it's a bidding highest bidder will get this paper so how much anybody wants to give it's a piece of paper you are not even ready to give anything but in this piece of paper government of india seal rupee note mahatma gandhi space is put 100 rupees it becomes same piece of paper 100 rupees same piece of paper becomes 500 rupees same piece of paper becomes uh -huh. piece of paper you create a value people get attached to that people die for it <laughs> and a piece of paper and who created the value for that just putting by some picture on that the piece of paper into made into rupee For rupee, you will work hard. All of your life, you will, all of all of your life. Please understand, you are working for a piece of paper. Calling it as money. 
a concept called piece of paper becomes a money rupee a piece of paper people murder other each other for a piece of paper piece of paper you spend 30 years or 40 years of your life to earn that piece of paper <laughs> but i'm going to give you free take it no no you don't take it because there is no is not written there no oh, one rupee note <laughs> so concepts you are making real concepts you are making living it's we who make the concepts real so the maya itself is not a problem we give the reality to the maya that's the problem and giving reality to the maya is called nana that's called banda nana because banda when you give reality to nana and make it subject to experience and say it's me it's mine then there's a problem as long as you able to use the nana knowledge properly there's no problem so nana becomes banda objective knowledge or subjective knowledge objective knowledge becomes banda you know i know so much about this subject i am a great expert big deal right there will be another person who will know more and however you know how much you know still there will be unknown so vidya dadat vinayam knowledge has to give us when i am means uh, humility but knowledge gives some pride again another bondage who you are causes a problem the moment you are woman anything which happens to women side identity are problem not only your identity some woman is hurt somewhere you will get hurt all women are hurt your identity is problem your identity is the knowledge given by society it's useful but it's not real not real you who is real you the child in you is the real you the innocent child can you become innocent again like a child that is a spiritual journey that is the freedom from known and if you become free from known the mind will become silent your thoughts are coming one thought of the third third thought because you are using knowledge giving reality giving applying it so i lost money last week so what will happen to my my next next uh, next year what will happen if the stock market crashes concept 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 you're giving reality creating thoughts and thought becomes stress then you're searching for peace what are you doing with your life so know yourself means go back to your own self what is that the child which was born innocent is it possible to become innocent with all this knowledge is the question of spiritual journey knowledge is there so with that knowledge can i become innocent then you have to become free from knowledge free from knowledge doesn't mean erasing knowledge it is not dementia it's not a shock treatment free from knowledge means free from identification with the knowledge using the knowledge but not being used by the knowledge are you using the knowledge or are you using abusing the knowledge knowledge will not cause you suffering until you give a reality to that and start using it memory is never a problem how you associate the memory is a problem so let us become free from the idea of myself ego whatever self created idea whatever ideas we have our about ourselves self identity then what remains is a true identity blissful that's your true nature any questions anybody on zoom has a question or anybody here you have a question Yes. Mm -hmm. you, you said that everything that you know becomes becomes an object. Like I know that bottle. Is object only can know, no? Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. So like when you are in a dark room, you said that I know I am that. So the child it becomes an object. See, when when you say I know I am there. Okay. I uh, in a, in a dark room, they are asking the question. I know I am there. Why are you there? I am there because my body is there. So the moment you say my body, 
Is it an object or a subject? This is my apple. So I am separate from apple. My apple is an object. What happened? Body is an object. The one who says that is not an object. I know I am there. I know part of it. I know part is the subject. subject. Body is an object. But I know that I am. No, no. I know I am there because of the body is false. Yeah. I know the body because I am there. The other way is true. Yeah, yeah. So the I am there. Who is that I am there? I can. It is not an object. Yeah. It is a subject. Object is available to our sense organs or the mind. But you know. I know myself not as an object. The one who is known, one who is known, knower. Can you see that person? Can you experience that person? Can you experience that way? You will never be able to do that as an experience as an object. It is a pure subject. Right? So then when you say, I know, I know as an object or I know as a Existence. My body. That the, my body knows is object. No, then you are actually mistaking yourself. That's what usually. That's why I give example. No, this is apple. My apple means I am separate from apple. When you say this is my body, then I am separate from the body. Yeah. So one who is separate from the body that cannot be available to sense organs in the mind. So that I know part is actually a subject, but we mistake it for body mind. Yeah, we mistake it body mind. I know our pure subject, we mistake it for body and mind. That's our misery. Mm -hmm. And what is the limit? What, what where is that pure subject? It's it's infinite, it can never be seen. It's unknowable. But you are aware. You are aware, not as object. I you are aware know. as awareness. Yeah. Right? No. I know. I know. More than you can't say anything. So in, in, yes, Shravan? So, in fact, uh, freedom from the knowledge is also simultaneously freedom from the knower and the no, uh, known itself, right? right. No so, knowledge. Yes, that's exactly right. So, freedom from the, the any, no, any knowledge in was knower knowledge and known natru dneya dnanam okay so that means subject object and knowledge so the moment you become free from this subject knowledge of the subject free from the knowledge of the object there's a total freedom then what remains is infinite brahman pure awareness which is not knowable but it is knowable as i am Knowable as a pure subject, I am. But you cannot objectify it. It is freedom from triputi. Subject, object, duality. Hari Om Prabhuji. Yes, Vasu. Uh, knowable as I am, Andra Sulpa Vistara Madhi Prabhuji. Knowable. This is, there is always a subject object duality apple is there and i am there right okay so apple is object i am as a subject i know the problem body mind intellect man woman and mm. real i is pure awareness i am is a subject i know andre then the one who knows is separate from i am prabhuji i if i say i am i know i am as a subject then I am I'm still prior to the subject and I am, you, I know I am, right? It's an expression. Okay. 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 Expression. Don't confuse the expression with the reality. So okay. When you say mm. I am, show me the I am. Where is that I am? Show me that I am. Mm, it's a feeling only. Alwa. No, even feeling is also object. The feeling, thought is an expression. Mm. Don't confuse the expression with the reality. What is being pointed? So is I am the first object then? Unattached object? No. Huh. It is not even unattached object. It's your expression you are confusing with the reality. Okay. If I say I exist, I have to express in words. Okay? Words hmm. is my expression. Hmm. 
but one who says that he is not an object is not an expression one who is there is source okay hmm. so about the source i am making a statement that's okay fair statement okay it is not objectification then i'll ask you show me that say show me that i am hmm you hmm. cannot show no because it's not an object hmm hmm you cannot point out write write the picture of that i am you cannot hmm right it is not hmm. available for conceptualization okay so unless i attach it with something unless i attach it with body or uh, but that will become a, that will become a pseudo identity no then it becomes the form uh, uh. because a form hmm hmm the real i am when i use the word i am okay so the word i am points to i for cons consciousness hmm so consciousness cannot be seen hmm can you experience consciousness Mm. You cannot experience consciousness. Consciousness can experience anything, mm. right? I means consciousness. I means existence. Show me existence, then you show the body. So now, what? If the body goes, does existence die? So body becomes burnt, or body, uh, any uh, any form gets burnt to ashes. So it exists as existence, ashes. So ashes exists as atoms and molecules. Atoms and molecules exist as energy. Energy exists as pure existence, which cannot be seen. existence cannot be destroyed okay right it is a, it is a, it is a, it is a i which which you are speaking of is beyond uh, it's a before your language okay so uh, i know i am means it's just a way of expressing but there is a, it is really i can't know i am i know i am you know i am see you exist you know it doesn't require any proof for at all do you know okay. do, you, do you require a proof that you exist no right no. no but that existence is confused with the body that's a, that's the proof that's the problem that's all okay mm -hmm. existence is confused with the body the pure mm -hmm. existence cannot be known and pure existence doesn't require a proof mm -hmm. so freedom from the known means rejecting all the objectified knowledge all so objectified that... knowledge is conceptual knowledge useful for functioning vyavaharika mm mm but they are not use they are not real mm so like example gold and necklace necklace is useful okay but when i say necklace what i am really pointing out is a gold hmm a necklace cannot exist without gold hmm necklace is just a name and form right okay name and form has no reality at all hmm but whole of our mind is full of name and form that we treat as reality and function then can we say that uh, knowledge and experience can happen only when uh, when thing when the unknowable gets objectified unknowable get objectified then there is a experience and knowledge ha ah, but that is all objectified knowledge so it is not real it is it is useful it concept is 100% useful hmm. necklace hmm. is 100% useful no woman wear wears a gold hmm A pure gold cannot be worn. Also, <laughs> pure gold has to be made impure. Then it has to be given form. Then women will wear the necklace. So, is this the actual meaning that self-realization is not another experience? Because no, we'll take up, we keep that question. Okay, you write the question. I'll we'll answer that question. Okay, okay. Right? Self-realization is it experience? I'll answer that question. But first, let us the freedom from known. Is it clear to all? Is there anybody? Any question for anybody? Yes. Ego or the body is created for functioning. 
we were not able to hear the question prabhu ji we were not able to hear the question okay, okay. yeah so can you please can you ask the question Yes, it's what is it? What is it? Yes. No, if I mute, I can't hear. Welcome here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, use it now. Yes. What is it? You can hear? Ha! Now, now we can hear. Now we can hear. So what I'm saying is, uh, there is a. Uh, Jiva and Atma, Jada and Chetana. You know, this I is, you know, when you try to know, even when we express this, right? I, we try to express the I. The pre-linguistic I is formed to know and to perceive. You know, that's the extension. Now, I was requesting, I was checking. Uh, atma is attributeless while jada doesn't have its own existence i has come in between and, uh, the ego has come in between the pure i the uh, probably called set come in between no 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 pure i has not come in between. ego has come in between. pure i is not coming between pure i is atma pure i is atma okay so now let's say small i has come in between ego has come in between. come in between that is the pre linguistic i mm. now to know the Atman is even doesn't have this at all. No. You, the small eye is not there. It's attributeless. The unknowable is that completely unknowable. Atman is unknowable. Unknowable. And uh, I think that was, uh, I was just validating this uh, understanding. That's it. Correct. Okay. What you are saying is, hmm. what you are saying is, the Atma, pure awareness, then there's a body, then there's a bridge between the body and the Atma. The bridge is called Jiva or Ego. The ego is used for functioning, doing, knowing. Okay. That ego cannot know the Atma because ego is operating in the domain of the objects. So, for example, this glass is there. I am using the glass to see the objects. See you people, I am using the glass. But can glass see me, my eyes? The glass cannot see my eyes. Glass is the instrument. Okay. Ego and the body is used for functioning in the world. It's an instrument. Ego cannot know the consciousness who is using the instrument or who is the Atma, who is, sub, who is behind the instrument. It will never know. My glass will never know what is my eyes. But the problem is glass is insentient. Ego appears to be alive. Body appears to be alive. Ego claims that I am the Atma. I am the body. So there the problem begins. Because ego cannot conceptualize what is not an object. Ego cannot understand what is not an object. So you, real you, becomes an object in the, in the eyes of the ego. And it is treated on par with some other object. You are objectified. And you are treated like an object. Your consciousness, you have become an object in the eyes of your own self, ego. Who am I? I am a man. It's an object. I am suffering. It's an object. Who am I? Real. I am. Pure. Unaffected by anything. It's not an object. So entire spiritual journey, many people are going in a spiritual journey to find an object called I. It is not there. I want to get experience of Brahman, never possible. I want to become Brahman, not possible. I am, I want to get experience of Turiya, not possible. Because you are already that. One who says, I want, I want, is the ego. And ego wants to catch that I self as an object. Object thing is the problem. Then can I know myself? Yes, I can know myself because I already know. I exist. I am aware. Don't confuse my expression with the, my real life. One who is talking through this body is Atma. One who is hearing through this body is Atma. You are very much alive. You are very much active, operating and functioning through the body. But you, can you see yourself? No. 
the example i give for atma is a woman who is wearing a mask her body is covered her eyes are only visible she can see everybody but nobody can see her face atma is like that atma can see everybody through the body mind intellect complex but atma cannot see by itself see by anybody cannot see the atma all the teaching is for ego's mistake mistake it is doing mistake is saying treating treating atma as object treating atma as a body mind intellect or treating atma as a woman treating atma as a uh, happy or unhappy mistaking atma and treating atma as a object is the mistake being doing objectifying the atma objective himself you are doing you are par with on par the object you are not a object that's why people say he died he he, he died okay he is unhappy all those things are false the disput atma is that clear at all anybody any questions about this yes through the ego what happens is when you say that this feelings and emotions which come from the you know paradigm of the mind they are also trying to you know uh, get into that uh, identification wherein you know that what is the nature of the self now you have listened that what is the nature of the self i am all shanto sarupa i am all this and that and suddenly it starts to you know uh, try to change it to that uh, ah, that's that's again, objectification. yeah that's again an object objectification ah. but that objectification seems like you know you are in a different zone and all that kind of a mischief starts from there wherein you never know that where you are getting stuck and still you know when you know also and you are getting out of it but you see that you know you have objectified no, no, basically, uh, objectified and you are doing the objectification again this is a self object yes and that reflection is happening so in front earlier, of earlier earlier you are in the physical world maya then you are in the mental world maya now in spiritual world maya i am enlightened i am liberated i am mukta that again another maya okay so if you come out of this certain identification with the subtle then you are free yeah Prabhu, as you said am... this identification this objectification has happened here okay immediately the objectification happens in the front and it is a reciprocating thing which happens and you know you are not actually you know you, there is you see that you know the uh, escape that is what you say as the hole is is just you know the thin layer which you know that if you have to touch it it goes but it's very difficult to do it yeah yeah that's okay there's a, there's a physical maya mental maya and spiritual maya <laughs> Okay. I'll do it my own way. The moment you object, you respect. No object is enough. That will never be his question. With your mind, with your mind. Is it clear now? Shall we call this question? Or anybody else have any question on this? Ah, uh, Prabhuji, yeah. when I. when when i say Asuka, i am ha huh, when i say i am brahman hmm. or i am self realized hmm. is it how do i know how do i know it's not the claim of my ego <laughs> ego only claims sir huh. so so that ego, means i ego, cannot ego the moment is the maya <laughs> ego operates in the domain of maya one is avidya maya and svidya maya so vidya maya is like an antivirus virus is also a software antivirus is also software finally virus software destroys the antivirus i'm sorry antivirus destroys the virus okay <laughs> so if you are if you are saying you are claiming brahman okay and it's overriding claim claim that i am the body so somebody is comes and kicks you still you feel i am brahman the kick doesn't disturb you mentally so then the vidya maya has nullified the avidya maya okay okay so all the sthita prakriti lakshana will start move, uh, appear in you are you clear yes prabhu ji the disease and the freedom from disease both are in the domain of maya atma is not affected by any of this okay then what are we trying to remove 
we are trying to remove the identification of atma with the body and mind so it, uh, can can we say it is like one thorn removing another thorn one thorn removing another thorn so the role of vidya maya is important actually there vidya maya very deeply it affects you ah. vidya maya is nullified okay then okay. the job of vidya maya is over okay it's like after okay. giving the medicine the disease is gone hmm right hmm. after that medicine is not useful hmm so similarly hmm. vidya maya i am brahman should be used to nullify i am the body i am the mind i am the intellect i am suffering i am unhappy i am happy all those things you have to remove wow yes understand yes prabhu ji yes very it's also clear. a tool it's also in the domain of maya vidya maya avidya maya both are in the domain of maya but vidya maya is medicine see somebody has taken poison so doctor will give another poison another chemical chemical also is poison only to to nullify the poison given earlier in fact when the people get snake bite the doctor give injection that's another snake bite another snake poison the poison is used to nullify the poison so vidya maya avidya maya is a vritti thought i am the body i am the mind i am the intellect i am suffering i am brahman i am atma is also a thought but this i am brahman i am the atma has come thought that i am there has come through neg the negation of everything neti 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 not 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 the pure i is identified as not object of anything mm. so that identification has to be proper otherwise what will happen you will still associate another object called brahman with the i mm. free from all conceptualization what i remains it's you others you will identify another object with brahman and that object you will identify the uh, 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 me so then you become a bigger object called brahman so if i understood this correctly mm -hmm. from multiple thoughts of i am the body i am vaso i am engineer i am teacher i am trainer i go to one thought i am brahman ah, and then I even that brahman, i am brahman must be dropped with i am brahman is a conceptual thought in the beginning ha huh. but when you identify i am brahman real i am brahman hmm. it's not an object it's pure awareness hmm. otherwise it will become a what you call as auto suggestion self suggestion hypnosis i am brahman i am brahman hypnosis it's not that hmm. Hmm. okay here i has to be identified properly as not an object as pure awareness okay then only it's hmm. approach dana hmm. that's intuitive direct knowledge that i am not an object hmm can only free you hmm until that it becomes just a self suggestion auto suggestion i am brahman i am brahman it will become self suggestion okay okay, okay. hmm so that doesn't nullify the poison of vidya maya avidya maya hmm the reality only can nullify the avidya maya i am brahman is a thought but here i am brahman where i am is identified is not an object that mm. reality arises in the mind that only nullifies the ego mm. is it clear yes sir one minute ha ब्रह्मा अखंडाकार वृत्ति okay so any vritti any thought involves a subject and object it's in what triputi subject object and knowledge for example this is a book book is a subject i am the book is object i am the subject it's a khanda vritti khanda is there 
So I am Brahman is akhanda. There is no subject object duality. The knower, knowledge, and knowing is one reality. Okay. So now knower, knowledge, and known becomes one reality. That is called Brahman. So that you have to recognize as I am. You have to recognize that as I am, which is knower, known, knowledge becomes one. When it will become one, you have experience of that. In deep sleep, you have experience of that. Okay. So that you have to recognize as you. In other words, whatever I am in deep sleep is real me that you have to recognize. Then that alone can nullify other thoughts. Your real I has to be identified. That's why Mantra Kapanishad says, I am Atma Brahma. Means I in the deep sleep is Brahman. What is in deep sleep? Pure awareness. Not a doer, not an enjoyer, not a sufferer. That is real I. So that I is real you. So you have to you have to use that I to nullify all other eyes, false eyes. You it's not self suggestion, autom automation, auto suggestion. I am Brahman. I am Brahman. No. You have to recognize your true nature in deep sleep as real I. And that deep sleep I should replace your all other false eyes. That's called nididhyasa. In deep sleep, are you a doer? Are you an enjoyer? Are you a sufferer? Are you an experiencer? You are pure bliss. That I am Atma is called Pratyagatma. So you have to claim that I am that Pratyagatma. When the thought comes, thought of suffering comes, this thought is mind, it's object. I am not suffering. As a Pratyagatma, I am the witness of this. You have to remember that. Then only it will make you free. Otherwise, by repeating I am Brahman million times, you will not solve the problem. So now, I am Brahman is called Akhanda Karvati. There's no or no, no knowledge, duality is not there. In deep sleep, I don't have duality. Subject, object, duality is not there. So you have to claim that I am Brahman based on your deep sleep experience or experience of Samadhi, where you enter into deep sleep like state. Either way, it's okay. Are we clear, Shravan? Yes, Prabhuji. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I am uh, the Pratyagatma has to know that he is not the Pragna. Pratyagatma no, uh, is actually Vishwa has, to know. Vishwa has huh? to know. Vishwa has to know. Pratyagatma is Vishwa has to know that Pratyagatma is Brahman. Huh, but Vishwa was identifying that as Pragna and you should know all three are not him. All three are not, all three are Brahman. It's a name for Atma only. Uh, when no. you remove the uh, superimposition, then what remains is Brahman only. The whole process is to removing superimposition. Hmm. Oh, so you're saying Pragna is also not identified with uh, um, Jiva. See, Vishwa, Taijasa, Pradna, all the names are given to Atma only in different roles. Uh, the ego is not, not uh, merged with either of them. No, no. See, uh, when I say Vishwa, it is the individual consciousness with the universal universe, like that uh, the world. Deva. Together, it's Deva. We are speaking of Vishwa as a Deva, right? Is a totality with the Jiva is called Deva. Oh, okay, okay. Correct, no? Yeah. Now, it is, who, who it is distinct from Jiva. Huh? When you say Deva, it is distinct from Jiva. No, 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 no. Jiva is promoted to Deva. So, Shravan, you are a Jiva, correct? So, Jiva, we look at as the object, right? The idea here is that there is no object, that the freedom from objectification is no, what no, no. we are. Jiva is an experience, sir. Okay. Oh, Jiva is also Deva then. In Jiva a way. is Deva. Jiva integrated the total environment, right? Shavan can be experienced with the world included. Without world, Shavan can, cannot be experienced. Hmm. Jiva, Shavan, can you exist without the world and be say, Krishna claim I am experienced? Sir? No. The moment, uh, this, yeah. when you say Shavan and the world together, it's called Deva. Correct. That we have to treat as experience, sir. Deva is the experience, sir. Okay. Deva is the one who has ignorance. Mm. Because now, Jiva is a part of Deva. Ignorance is there for the Deva, not for Jiva. Because the totality is there. 
Okay. That Deva called Vishwa has to understand I am the Deva called Pratna and Deva called Pratna is Pratyagatma and Pratyagatma is Brahman. That understanding is to happen. Okay. Here the superimposition has to be removed. Objective and knowledge has to be removed. That's all. Okay. Right? Entire spiritual journey is removing the objective and knowledge which is Mithya, unreal. Gold, necklace without a gold is not real. So the freedom is not the why only freedom from the known then because uh, known is the object right from that no, angle yeah. no no freedom. no your problem is the object called known object called body and mind you have made it to subject okay the body and mind and intellect is also known to you no yes that you have made into subject you have split the whole known into subject and object okay become free from the total known including subject okay is subject knower or known S subject is we take it as knower it is not it's also known that's also known right the pure yes. knower cannot be known is atma so there is no real subject then <laughs> it never was <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the real sub there's no real subject called knower. Uh, real subject is never there, but it got married, has a children, two children, one has gone to America, all those things happens. <laughs> there is no real self-knowledge also. <laughs> no, no, there's a ignorance for objecting living as the self. The ignorance is nullified. That nullification is called self-knowledge. So what we are saying is uh, this uh, Vidya Maya is actually self-knowledge because the self does not need any knowledge. Vidya Maya is self-knowledge which removes self-ignorance. Yes, self-ignorance. Okay. So now but, the problem for most of the people is the self-knowledge, they want to find it as a new experience. Again, objectifying the self-knowledge. Uh, See, this exact same thing I was telling in one hall. Okay, there are many oh. people are there listening to this thing. I told Atmadnana or Brahmadnana is not at all an experience, new experience. One person in the audience came and uh, objected to me. He strongly objected. Mm. So it's called Brahmananda, it's Supremananda, it's so much a bliss. You don't even know. That's why you're talking like this. Then he also claimed that one person living in Himalaya who works only Lakopina, he is living in Brahmananda. So much of illusion is there about Brahmananda also. <laughs> uh, yes. Brahmananda means freedom from all limited happiness. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm? It's self-evident. It doesn't require proof. But the problem is superimposition is happening. No? Mixing up is happening. Yes, Vinit, what when he says, uh, Vinit is saying, what is that? Seer, seeing, seen. All three appear and disappear together. I am the Sakshi. When consciousness of self, it is Pratyagatma, self is this correct understanding, perfect understanding. Correct understanding. Okay. So we'll stop this. Uh, you, are, you had some question on this? No, probably that I was just interpreting what you thought. Devasya Prabhava. Hmm. Uh, and the Brahma Saravati, the, the dynamism is the. No, Devasya Sabhavana, Brahma Saravati. No uh, what is Devasya Sabhavana? See, the like Vishwa and Virat, hmm. uh, Taijasa, Hiranyagarbha, and uh, Pragna and Ishvara. Hmm. That, that is, that's a continuous happening, you know, like Vishwa experiencing. Um, Virat. This is Vishwa is not experiencing Virat. The, the divine, is... divine having divine experience. No. Yeah. Divine having divine experience. Uh, so that is all it is. It is, it is a Sobhava itself. See, basically, hmm. what is universal we are making personalized individual. We are not, yeah, take out the personalization. It is, a, it is just a Sobhava. 
Okay. 